Merry Christmas. Luke 1, 46 to 48 says, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For, his re for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Let us pray. Lord, how wonderful it is to see the words of Mary. She is so ecstatic that the God of the universe has chosen her to be the vessel for the Christ child to be born. What a privilege and honor that is. And during this Christmas season, Lord, may we also rejoice and sing joy to the world. Thank you, Lord, for being willing to come in the form of a baby, grow up to be a man, and die for the sins of the world. And because of this, we rejoice that you have given us the hope for eternal life. Thank you so much, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for the celebrants this week. I left it to my nephew, Wolfie. Wolfie. Help him, Lord, to love you more and more without much worldly influence that can affect his young life, O oh Lord. I lift it to Adele and Nolan and Emmy, Lord. May you help them learn more and more of how great your love is for them. So much, Lord God, that it may change them from the inside out. Thank you, Lord God, for the wedding anniversary, wedding anniversary of Noel and Lilia. Continue to give them good health and, and comfort. Continue to give them that patience and love for each other. And love for you more and more. Thank you, Lord God, for these, these lives, O oh Lord. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
I want you to think back in your life and recall when you, had, when you heard some news about you that was related to you that you couldn't keep quiet but had to share it with others. It could have been when you got engaged or when you had your first job, your first crush, or your first child. But there's, there's one news that I hear most from people. Even more than having their first child, Something that I have not yet experienced, and many have felt it, and when this happens to them, they get so excited and proud that it seems like they want to tell everybody what's happened to them. Any guesses what that is? And these people would even show pictures. Any other guesses? It's having their first grandchild. I hope they all have that experience sometime in the near future. Today I'm going to share with you how a certain people became so excited that they too couldn't help but share their experience. Luke 2, 8 to 20. Luke 2, 8 to 20. In the same region where they were same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. So there are these shepherds working late. And all of a sudden, an angel appeared. An angel appeared. Nothing like this has, ha has happened for over 400 years. And they were terrified. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And during that time, there was no electricity, there was no light pollution. So when it was dark, it was dark. And all of a sudden, boom, an angel appears. Now, it begs the question, of all the people in the world, why did God decide to share the birth and announce the birth of Jesus to these shepherds? According to our, my friend, Joe Shepherd, yes, that's the name, Joe Shepherd. He said the shepherds were the bottom of the tone pole in society. They're low class, even below low class. And according to theologian Bill Smith, uh, Sithma, in ancient Israel, shepherds were generally considered unclean in the community of God's people because of the work they did. They were in daily contact with dirty, smelly sheep. The sheep's manure, their blood from cuts and scrapes, and the insects that, that buzzed around them. All this meant that the shepherds were almost never clean enough to worship with God's people in God's presence. So they were generally treated as outsiders. I mean, it just shows that God is no respecter of persons. God can use anyone with any background. It doesn't matter. If God can use shepherds to do, the, to do His bidding, He can use anyone, the rich, the poor, the educated, the not educated, the popular or not, clean or dirty, doesn't matter. God can use anyone, even to share Jesus with anyone, as these shepherds share the good news of Christ's birth. Verse 10 to 12, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. 
This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Now the message for these shepherds was incredible. It was a long time coming, again, for 400 years, 400 years, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the Jewish community would have been waiting for four centuries for the Messiah, the Chosen One. Uh, by the way, Christ means Messiah. Christ is, is the Greek form of Messiah. Um, and so they've been waiting for the Savior to come all these years. And these shepherds would find the baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. First of all, how would, you, how would these shepherds find the baby Jesus? From my, again, from my friend Joe Shepherd, since Bethlehem was a place where people sacrificed lambs, there might have been a place on the outskirts of Bethlehem where the sheep stayed. And the shepherds knew this area well. And a manger was not actually like a shed-like structure but more of a feeding trough where animals would eat their food. Not a very appropriate place for a baby to lie down. And according to some commentaries, Mary and Joseph and the baby might have been staying more in a cave than in a barn, barn situation. And I'm sure the rich and famous, like say Prince Charles, who was born in a hospital with the best accommodations and the best and latest innovations of, for childbirth and the most experienced and competent doctors in the land. I mean, he had the best the world can offer. But for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he would stay among animals, dirty, smelly animals lying in a feeding trough. You know, I, I didn't grow up in a farm, but I do live with animals. I have two dogs and a rabbit stays with us, Rachel's rabbit. And one of the things I learned living with these creatures is that they don't use the toilet. You'd have to clean up after them. And I'm sure where Jesus stayed, it was stinky, malodorous, foul smelling. It was a when, I, when I, I think about it, it's, it's pretty primitive, so peasant-like, so undignified, especially for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. According to GodQuestions.org, surely God's Son deserved a high-profile birth in the most elegant of surroundings. But instead, God's Son made His appearance on earth in the lowliest of circumstances. This humble birth conveys an amazing message to creation. The transcendent God humbled Himself to come to us. Instead of coming to earth as a pampered, privileged ruler, Jesus was born in meekness as one of us. He is approachable, accessible, available. No palace gates blocked the way to Him. No ring of guards prevented our approach. The King of Kings came humbly, and his first bed was a, a manger. 13 and 14. And suddenly there appeared with an angel, with the angel, and a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Now imagine the scene. After one angel came, then a multitude of heavenly hosts came, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among men with whom He is pleased. I'm sure the skies were lit with these, he with this, these heavenly hosts and, and glorifying God. I'm sure people miles around could see this supernatural light source. And the message was praising God and peace on earth among men with whom God is pleased. Now, what kind of peace is are they talking about here? Is this kind of peace of serenity 
like when things are in chaos and that you have the inner peace knowing that God is in control, that God is there. Actually, it's not that kind of peace. It's a relational kind of peace. Let me give you an example. Miriam and I have gone through battles and wars. We have had our dis disagreements on how things should be done. And that causes a lot of uh, friction and, and tension between us. For example, in the area of cooking oatmeal, in the area of cooking oatmeal, the instructions on the box, and I like, I love instructions, I read instructions, I follow instructions. The instructions on the box says you put the oatmeal in the pot when the water is boiling, when the water is boiling. But no, Miriam does it totally different. She says you put the oatmeal and the water together, then boil it. That way, to soak the oatmeal better. Disagreements. And due to these quote-unquote discussions, sometimes there's no peace between us. There's no reconciliation. We're at war with each other. Just like our relationship with God. And this all started with Adam and Eve's disobedience. The sin of disobedience caused the peace to be broken between, uh, between man and God, between us and God. It's so bad that according to Ephesians 2, 3, it says it's like the rest. We were by nature deserving of God's wrath, God's eternal punishment. And the significance and the great news of Christmas is that God provided a way of peace. A right relationship with God by, the way, by way of the life and sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for you and me. Verse 15 to 16. When the angels had come from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's, let, let's go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that's happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in a manger, in the manger. Now, as you look at this verse here, did the angels tell the shepherds to find the baby Jesus? Did the angels tell the shepherds to find the baby Jesus? Look at, look at the verses. No. They went to the baby Jesus to find the baby Jesus because they wanted to. They were so excited. And they said, let's go. And they hurried to find Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. They did it on their own because of their excitement. They wanted to see this Messiah, this Christ child. Verse 17 and 18, when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told, told them by the shepherds. I mean, the shepherds couldn't hold it in. They were telling people what they had experienced. What the angels said was exactly true. They were not dreaming. The Messiah, the chosen one, the one that they've been waiting for for centuries has finally come. The Savior of the world has come. And people were finally hearing this message of good news. But why would they believe that these low-class citizens, these lowly, dirty, insignificant shepherds? First of all, they really had, really had nothing to gain if they told a lie. Nothing to gain. And second of all, I believe the people of Bethlehem probably saw a great light from afar, which was actually from the heavenly host, which the shepherds saw out in the fields. And finally, they could make sense of all that when the shepherds came with their news. Verse 19. But Mary treasured all these things, pondered them in her heart. The shepherds came and confirmed with Mary what the angel had probably said nine months ago regarding conceiving Jesus, 
the Son of the Most High. I'm sure she could, she, she, she's rec recollecting all that has happened. All those nine months, there was so much drama, so much anxiety from Joseph not believing her. I'm sure there was other people, her friends and relatives that didn't believe her as well of, of, of what had happened about how she became pregnant. And that's not all. The anxiety of Mary and Joseph traveling from Nazareth to Bethlehem, which is about 70 miles. That's from Long Beach to Oceanside. And now it's so easy to drive there. Uh, just take the take the I believe the four or five to the five, and it only takes ninety minutes to get there. But for them, it was they it was possible. It was about it, it might have been they might have taken it go on foot and riding on a donkey. It doesn't say riding a donkey in the scripture, but it might have been. It might have taken, also taken five to seven days of traveling. Can you imagine that? What makes this even worse was Mary was at the end of her pregnancy. Can you imagine riding on a donkey at the end of your pregnancy and every bump and bump and bump, it might have felt that Jesus was already coming out. And that's not worse. That's, that's not all. At the end of the journey, not finding a place to stay. Except resting with other animals. Now these sheep breeders, these shepherds, come and confirmed all as has happened was part of God's plan. And Mary treasured and pondered these things. Verse 20, and the, shepherd, the shepherds went back, went back home, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. I don't think these shepherds were ever the same again. After having this, this incredible supernatural uh, experience, this revelation from God. I'm sure they told more and more people because they couldn't just keep it inside. And they went back home glorifying and praising God for all that they had, had, uh, had heard and seen. This good news of great joy which will be for all people. For today in the city of David that has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And they couldn't keep the excitement in. Brothers and sisters, during this Christmas season, I want you to reflect and treasure all the things that God has blessed you and ponder them in your heart. Take an inventory of how God has been so good to you, starting with that peace that He's given you, that reunited relationship with God that we don't deserve. We deserve eternal punishment, yet He gives us forgiveness and eternal paradise. And I want you to think of all the times that God has been so faithful to you. Even the many times we are so unfaithful to Him. Think about all those times, those special moments that you felt the strong presence of God. Those precious moments. It might have not, it might have not felt like an angel speaking to you directly. But still, those were special moments that you sensed His presence. And that you could hear His voice inaudibly think of think of think of how your life would be so different if jesus was not a part of your life i want you to think about that i want you to ponder those things and and, and I, I pray that as you reflect and ponder and treasure those things that it may ignite a spark a light that you can't hide that you want to share all these things with others that you have been given the honor and privilege of experiencing the presence and blessings of the almighty god so much so just like again like these lowly shepherds you can't help but share the good news with others sharing the peace of jesus doesn't have to be complicated you don't need a doctor degree in theology to do so 
the shepherds, these lowly shepherds, share their, their wonderful experience with others. So you too can share the experiences that you have encountered with God. Share the good news of Jesus with others. Share that they can have that peace with God as well. Just share what you have experienced. That's all. Like the shepherds. The simple message of Christ's birth and how it changed your life. Share the true peace with others this Christmas. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have been so good to us. You've given us life and life abundantly. It all started with the peace that you've given to us, O oh Lord God, that right relationship. And Lord, beyond that, Lord, you've given us so many wonderful experiences, so much encounters, so much evidence of, Lord, of your reality that we cannot deny you, Lord God, and we cannot deny how, how good and loving and merciful and gracious you are to us. Lord, I pray that it may ignite, ignite a spark within us, Lord God, to share with you with others and just share. Share how you've changed our lives. And it all started because you've given us peace, that, relation, that right relationship with you. Thank you, dear Lord, in Jesus' name. be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now forever and ever. Amen. Oh.